Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a very interesting problem that every single person doing logging in .NET has, including you and me by the way, until I got the solution I'm going to show you today. And I will explain why it is such a problem and why by the time you discover it is a problem, because it can be discussed in the beginning, it's going to be way too late. So it's something you want to implement as soon as possible in your code bases. If you love of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let's see what the problem is. I have a .NET 8 application here and I have a log entry. So I'm saying logger.log information got weather for city, the city I'm getting from the request and then the days as the number of days that the forecast is requested for. So if I go ahead and I just say debug this application and I go to Insomnia and I call this endpoint to get the weather for 10 days and city of London, then you see here in the console that we have the log with the parameters replaced. But in reality, what's happening behind the scenes is that the parameter of London and the parameter of 10 are captured as parameters and they can be used in certain ways. For example, if I'm pushing these logs in application insights, these will actually be separate parameters in the custom dimensions of application insights, meaning I can do filtering, searching, can say more than five days to see the request that asks for, again, more than five days and so on, or see what's the most popular city that the weather forecast is requested for. So capturing them in this way makes analyzing them later way, way easier. However, there's a crucial problem with that approach and the way it's implemented by default. If there is another method somewhere in this application that uses the same parameter names, and for the sake of argument here, I'm just gonna create uh, another small method over here and say map get as an example, and all it's really doing here is just logging the log method, then this might look fine to you. However, there's a big difference. As you can see, days here now is a string, but I'm using the same name days for that integer previously parameter. This now means that when this parameter is captured as an integer initially, and then I push it as a string, the way it's going to be pushed into the logs here is as a string, but here as an integer makes sense. However, by doing that, if I go and I say set for days, and I set for days in my log entries as an integer, all of the logs that have captured it as a string will completely be ignored. Now, there are some very, very complicated ways to get around this, but it usually means you have to do work on that analyzer thing, whether that's Elasticsearch or Datadog or whatever. This is not something we want to do. When we say city as a string and days as an integer, we want to maintain them as those times forever in our application. And this is what the packets we're going to show you now will do for us. We can actually have rules for our structure log parameters so they don't drift to types that they should not be, saving us from having to deal with complex analyzation on that login provider. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on DOM train called From Zero to Hero GRPC in .NET. In that course, Irina Skurtu will teach you everything you need to know from the very basics of what GRPC is and how it works into some pretty advanced features. And by the end of it, you'll be able to write clean and scalable GRPC applications. GRPC is one of the must know technologies especially for an internal service communication. And it's one of the three skills that every .NET developer should have if you're doing any sort of API development, that is REST API, GRPC, and GraphQL. Irina has been using GRPC for years and teaching it around the world. She even has a book on web development in .NET, so you know you can trust her. She's really, really good, and I know her personally. Now, to celebrate the launch, the first 200 of you can use discount code GRPC20 at checkout to get 20% off your purchase. So use that link in the description, apply the discount, and the course is yours to keep. Now, back to the video. To do this, we're going to have to go ahead and add a new git package called meziantu.analyzer. Now, that package has a bunch of analyzers and it is made by Gerald Barret, who is one of my favorite .NET bloggers, link in the description. But the one we're going to use is the one that solves exactly the problem I talked to you about. So what I'm going to do now that I have the new git package is create a new file over here and I'm going to call it loggerparametertypes.analyzer. TXT, just an empty file. Now I can define a comment over here so I can put something with a hashtag in the beginning. But what I want to do is I want to specify the rules that, hey, when you see city in a log entry, that should be a string. And when you see days in a log entry, that should be an integer on the C sharp level. So to do that, what I'm going to say is, for example, with a comment here, a property named city should be of type string. 
Simple as that. And then to define the rule, all I'm going to say is, what's the name of the parameter I want? Oh, it is city. So city, and then semicolon, and then the CLR type of that parameter. So system dot string, because that's what a string is as a fully qualified namespace. So now I have this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in the CS proj that this file now is included as part of my build. So I'm going to say additional files, MS build this file directory, and then logger parameter types dot Ext. And I can do the same for the days. So I'm going to say days is system.int32 because that's the actual type of an integer behind the scenes. And if you want to have multiple types that are appropriate for that property, then you could also say system.int64 with another semicolon here. And this means that it can be both an integer and a long. So if I do that and I save and I go back here and I now build what you're going to see at build time is a few warnings. The one we care about is this one over here. Parameter days must be of type int or long, but is of type string. And then we have the rule of the analyzer that the library adds. Now, it looks like there's a small bug with my writer installation. This should also be here with yellow squiggly lines under the type. It is not for some reason and I couldn't resolve it. It will work fine on Visual Studio, so you would be able to see in real time. This is a warning and I'm sure they're going to fix it as well in Rider. But now both on design time and build time, you can see exactly that, hey, you're trying to pass a parameter in that is a string that should actually be an integer as you defined in your rules which is amazing because that means you cannot have inconsistencies in your logs. Now, you can change the severity of that type if you want to. Now it is a warning by default, but you could have a dot editor config over here and then paste the diagnostic level and you can say that this is not a warning now this is an error so the time you build you're gonna see that hey this parameter must be of int and i'm not gonna compile unless you actually fix that now this is completely up to you do you want to have it as a warning that's fine do you want to have it as an error that's also fine but the important thing is you don't push without having consistent types for your logs by the way if you don't want to have this txt file there's a way to do this with a c-sharp file you have to install the analyzers version of this package and the moment you install it, you can have a bunch of rules here. So I'm going to say analyzer rules as a C-sharp file, delete everything. And then I'm going to have an assembly level attribute on structured log field over here. And then I can specify, for example, that days should be of type integer, but also of type long. So you can have all your rules here and then you have one entry per type, so you don't need to have it in that TXT file, but that's completely up to you. The identity implementation are very simple and they're fixing a problem earlier that you could get around later, but at the expense of computation on that logging provider engine and whatever that also means with limitations in terms of querying an integer as a string and so on. It's a great, great little tool and I highly recommend you check it out. Please give a start to the GitHub repo as well. I'm going to put a link in the description. It is a lovely set of analyzers. And as we go, I'm going to show you more and more in this channel because there's some really nice tips that you should be following. But now I want to know from you, did you ever have this issue and how did you solve it? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.